Hey, Steve here. Thank you so much for joining me. This is video number four um, of a four-part series that I did on Singular Sound's Eros Loop Studio. It's a wonderful looping pedal if you uh, don't know anything about it. The first three videos, we set everything up. We recorded in what's called two by two mode. Now in this video, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking at six by six, where we can record six independent tracks and we can actually record up to six different parts as well. So uh, thank you so much for, for Guitar World for helping me uh, put this together and thank you for Singular Sound for providing me with the pedals to make this demo for you. So check it out. All right, so what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be looking at the Eros Loop Studio in the 6x6 format. So I've got six sections I can record and I've got six uh, parts that I can record. Now, I'm not going to be recording all of those, but basically what I'm going to be doing is treating this kind of like a digital audio workstation where I would normally record all my stuff. So I've already kind of thought about what parts I'm going to do. So... Uh, once I get into it a little more, I'll know how many I actually want to do, but the first one will just be acoustic. Now, uh, the second part will be acoustic with electric coming in. The third part will be, uh, I'll just add in some volume swells and things like that. And then the fourth part, um, I'm going to solo over that part. So I'm just going to show you how I build this. And uh, so what we've got here is, again, like the other uh, videos I've done on this, um, I've got the Aerosloop Studio connected to the Beat Buddy and I'm running about 65 beats per minute. Now I've got this set on stereo. So if you look here, hopefully you can hear me okay. If I go into the settings, main and instrument, stereo, I've got it set for stereo because I actually have two inputs put in there. I've got one for my acoustic into one channel and then I've got one for my electric that I'll be using to record the bass parts and you know the electric parts, that sort of thing. I'll do that in the next section. So I'm just running it stereo into my my actual recording so you can or my my DAW so you can hear what I'm doing. Um, but anyway, that's how I've got this set up. We can see here if I go into the loop studio, we've got six parts. You can see those little circles. OK, so if I start this, I've got it set for a two measure count in. And again, I discussed that in one of the other videos, right? So I'm just going to cancel that for now because I'm going to start at the beginning and record this whole thing through. So what I'm going to do, and you can always fast forward a little bit, but I want to show you this in real time. I'm going to record this guitar part and change the uh, the parts so I can record it all at once and be done with it. Okay, so that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to start this thing and we're going to get recording. So here we go. Make sure I got sound and here we go. Now I'm going to switch over just so I'm ready when I get there. So here we go, next part. Same thing though, and you'll see why in a little bit.
Okay. So that actually went pretty well, I'm glad to say. So basically what I did was I wanted to set up all the parts so I don't have to keep switching back and forth between my acoustic and electric. So in my mind, what I'm thinking is that first part is gonna be just acoustic. Then the second part is gonna be acoustic and bass. And, um, and then the bass is gonna continue on for the rest of it. And then the third part, and I'll add guitar in there too. I'll add another guitar part. And then the third part's gonna be some volume swells, and then the fourth part, I'm gonna add in another guitar part. Now again, you can overdub at any time. I'm just not overdubbing because I want individual control of the volume abilities of all of these channels when I get done, okay? So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna take a quick little break on my end and uh, switch out the guitar, and we're gonna record the next section. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I've got my guitar, I'm gonna record the bass part, and I'm just recording it with my guitar using a, a, a preset or a sound from the camper. Just to save a little, a little bit of time here. I certainly could grab a bass, but this will just save us some time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start at the beginning, and I, I know that the first part, I don't want bass, but I still wanna listen to it, and then when it gets to the next part, I'm gonna start recording this bass part, okay? So, and then I'm gonna record that bass part through the last three sections, because remember, I recorded four different sections. So let's have a listen to this. So I'm ready on the next part. Okay, so if everything went well, if I go back, I should have bass on not the first part, but the second part, right? So let's listen to the first part just real quick here. We're just gonna check it. Okay, so there's nothing there. So now we go to the second part. There's our bass. Okay, third part, there's bass. And then our fourth part also has bass. Okay, so all of the parts that we wanted to have bass are done. And notice how I did that was while it was recording, okay, I pressed the part that I wanted, okay, and then I waited for it to come toward the end and I hit uh, the next track for recording. And then what I do is sometime in that those eight measures, I just set myself up because there's a lot going on in your mind while you're recording all this, right? So uh, I, I click it to the next part, select part, I click it down, and that way I'm ready to go. And then once I get to the end of those eight measures, I just hit the next track to start recording. So it automatically switches to the next part of those four parts that I did. And then I'm ready to record that, that next part, that next track. So now what I need to do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna record guitar tracks right now. So give me a second to change my, my sound and we'll be ready to go. Okay, so now I've got a sound.
I'll use that for the recording. So what I'm gonna do again in the first section that I recorded, I'm not putting this, I'm just gonna listen to it just to prep myself. And then when I get to the second section where the bass comes in, this guitar part is gonna play through those next three sections and I'm just gonna keep layering, okay? And again, you don't have to listen to the whole thing if you don't want to, you can always fast forward a little bit. All right, so here we go. So I'm set for the next part. I can see where it says next track, so I'm gonna be ready to go. Okay, so now I've got that recorded. So now we should be able to go back and double check. So I'm gonna go back to the first part here. Whoops, sorry. So there we go. I'm just gonna check it. So just acoustic, go to the second part. Now I'm gonna mix that a little bit. Okay, so now we go to the third part. I should have all of that again, and I do. Okay, go to the fourth part. I have it all again. Okay, so we're good to go. All right, so now what I'm gonna be doing is just adding some volume swells, and I want this to happen in the third section, right? The third part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna back up to the first, we don't have to listen to all these parts. We'll go to the second part that leads into the third part, and that's where I'm gonna start doing these volume swells. So again, same thing. Let me straighten that out. Same thing here, I'm just gonna start it and then hit next part, hit the track, and you'll see that with my feet here. Here we go. So I'm gonna change the part to the next part, and there's my next track, see that? So now I'm ready to go. See how far we are by looking at these. I know I'm coming to the end. And here we go.
Okay, so now I've got that next part recorded. So now the last thing I need to do is just dial in a guitar tone, and I'm just gonna put this on the very last one, okay? So we're gonna go to, we got four parts, so we're gonna go to the third part, start there, and I'm gonna lead in with that fourth part. So give me a second to, again, quickly change my tone, and we're ready to go. Okay, so I've got uh, a lead channel kind of dialed in here, and what we're gonna do now, if we go back down to the pedal, the fourth part's the last part, and that's the part I'm gonna record on. So what I wanna do is I wanna go to the third part here, and I'm gonna start playing the drums there again just to prepare myself, and then I'm gonna record that, that last track. So here we go. Kind of getting ready here. Now I'm gonna hit that next track button when we get to that last measure. Here we go. So that would be my whole track. I almost forgot to end the song on the on the beat, buddy. I was so enthralled with the solo. Uh, but there it is. So now let's go back and let's listen to that. So I'm going to go back to this last part here. So we're dropping down to the fourth part. There we go. Here we go. Actually, let's listen to it with drums, though. So what I could do, sorry, got to shut everything off, shut everything up. Uh, it sounds like the, the guitar is a little hot, the, the lead guitar, so again, I could just play this, this last section. You see? And I could just adjust it that way. So it's a really, really great setup to be able to do the two by two for kind of quick jams or quick recordings to loop over. You know, again, I have a lot of students that love to uh, make their own. We, we'll talk about something in our live sessions and, uh, and this way they could make the chord progression that I just talked about, find the tempo that works best for them, play it in whatever key they like and then just simply jam over the top. But if you're looking for something far more complex, this is a great way of doing it. Now, do you need the beat buddy? Of course not. You wouldn't need to do it with a drum uh, a drum beat if you didn't want to. You could just use the click track. But I just thought this was really cool to be able to bring these two together and show you how this works. So uh, there it is. Hopefully this helped you a little bit and uh, showed you how the both the Aerosloop Studio and the Beat Buddy, both by Singular, uh, Singular Sound Works, great company. They helped me a ton in trying to figure out how this stuff works. This was all new to me. And so trying to get a hold of their customer support was really, really great. So thank you to them and thank you to you for watching and hopefully this helps you a little bit. All right, so hopefully these videos have helped you in better understanding how the uh, Aerosloop Studio works, how it connects to the Beat Buddy, the connectivity to your audio interface or whatever it is that you might be using. And again, just special thanks to Guitar World and of course to Singular Sound for allowing me to do this demonstration and show you how these pedals work. So take care, stay positive, and I'll talk to you soon.